Good. Right. Everyone ready to rock and roll? Good. Well, today we've reached an historic agreement to the better health and better hospitals for the working families of Australia. We've agreed to the biggest reforms to the health system since the introduction of Medicare. This is a good day for working families. It's a good day for senior Australians, for pensioners and for carers. It's a good day for mums and dads and patients and a good day for doctors and nurses working hard in our health and hospital system across the country. This agreement is a significant agreement, but now the real work begins. On the 1st of July this year, the National Health and Hospitals Network will start delivering the following. First, 1,300 new hospital beds. Two, an historic agreement to reshape mental health services and help 20,000 extra young people get access to mental health services. Three, over 6,000 new doctors. Four, an additional 2,500 aged care beds. Also, emergency department waiting times capped at four hours. Elective surgery delivered on time for 95% of Australians. A Commonwealth takeover of primary care and a Commonwealth takeover of aged care. The Commonwealth and seven states and territories covering about 90% of the nation's population have agreed to the Commonwealth retaining one third of the GST and becoming the dominant funder of the nation's hospital system. Premier Barnett and I have agreed that we will continue to discuss hospital funding arrangements with WA over the period ahead. For the first time, the Australian Government will become the dominant funder of the entire system. We'll retain a third of the GST currently provided to states and territories and direct it to Australia's health and hospital system. We'll fund 60% of building equipment, teaching and training and services delivered across our 762 public hospitals and we'll be funding all GP and primary care services and all aged care services. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very big reform of the health and hospital system of Australia. Today's agreement places the nation's finances on a more sustainable footing for the future for our health and hospital system and for the Federation more broadly. The Treasury has estimated that without change, state health spending would have consumed the entire revenue raised by state governments over the next three decades. This will place enormous pressure on the other areas of state responsibility, like transport, schools, law and order. Our actions today mean that this is no longer the case. Our actions today help ensure the future of the Federation. In order to fund more doctors, more nurses, more beds and better emergency departments and elective surgery, it's crucial also that the Australian Government is able to undertake reforms to deliver savings. This includes the reforms to the private health insurance that we proposed in the last budget. These changes would for us save $2 billion over four years and around $100 billion over the next 40 years. This is $100 billion which would be spent on doctors, more nurses and more beds. Currently, the opposition are blocking those changes. These reforms to private health insurance and the funding they provide will play a crucial role in funding these significant health reforms in the future. I'd like to conclude by thanking my colleagues here, all the Premiers and the Chief Ministers. This has been a long negotiation and it's been a very tough negotiation as we always said it would be. But we have worked well together and I would thank each and every one of them for the contribution they have made to this critical debate for the future of our health and hospital system. The most important thing is we've reached today an historic ag agreement to deliver better health and hospital services to working families, to pensioners and carers right across the country, people who depend on us and our work here today. I'd also like to thank the Federal Health Minister, Nicola Roxon, for the tireless work, the absolutely tireless work that she has put in over the past few years, months, weeks and days with her state and territory counterparts to bring this agreement about. Without her, this would not have been possible. Most of all, though, I'd like to thank the hard-working doctors and nurses and allied health professionals right across the Australian health and hospital system. 
These the good folk, the professional folk who have lent me their understanding, their time, their input, their ideas over the last nine months as I've sought to frame the Australian Government's response to the future reform of our health and hospital system. This is a terrific group of Australians. They are out there working in the field in an area which means so much to the everyday lives of millions of Australians. And they're often doing so at present under huge pressure with inadequate resources. And I'll take this opportunity, and I'm sure my colleagues would endorse it, to salute their professions. They are fundamental to the well-being of Australians. Our job as governments is to make their job a little easier for the future. Also, I'd like to thank the patients, the people who actually depend on the healthcare system of Australia for spending time with me also over the last nine months or so. I have spoken literally to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, from the smallest hospitals in rural communities uh, to the largest hospitals in our biggest cities. And so much of what they have said has been the same. So much of them crying out for two things. Please, please, please fix our system for the future. Please, please, please get rid of the duplication, the waste in our system, and please, please, please fund our system for the long-term future to deliver us more hospital beds, more doctors, more nurses. I would say to each of those folk, each of those very good folk, those suffering from cancer, those suffering from terrible diseases, those who have spent time with myself and my colleagues in recent months, that today we seek to respond to what you have been saying to us. This is a very big reform. I'd say to all those patients and their families who've supported them in their time of need, those who are crying out for better hospitals, today your voices have been heard. There's more work to be done, a whole lot more work to be done. But today, for the first time in a generation, the hard work of fundamental health and hospital reform has begun. Now, if I could ask uh, Christina, uh, the Premier of New South Wales as Chairman of CAF, uh, to uh, speak on behalf of the states and territories, and given the significance of today's agreement, to then turn to my colleagues each to contribute as well. Christina. Thank you, Paul.